All right. All right, everybody, thanks for coming and joining us again. Uh, we, Rita, Lindsay, and I will be doing a training on visual changes and not only what happens with dementia and visual changes, but also a little bit of normal vision changes as well, because as we age, our vision depletes. So we are going to kick it off with a little bit of a video.
You are attacking them visually because of the limitations in vision. They think you're blocking them in and there's no way out. You don't see it that way because you don't have dementia. You can see the whole person. So you're thinking, I don't know why she's acting like that. Stand it or sit in front of your person. And the term for this is called confrontational stance. Say it. Confrontational stance. You're confronting them. Is that what you meant? What did you want to do? Help? Okay, so this... All right, now everybody's favorite part, find a partner. All right, go ahead, feel free to spread out. We've got a big room here, so if you need to give some space, um, if you've got a full row of people, you're going to stand up, you spread out just a little bit. Stand up. Spread out a little bit. Don't be shy. We see each other every day. All right, now we're just going to basically mimic what Tipa did in the video in our field of vision here. So put your arms up to your sides. Right now, you are a normal 25-year-old. Wiggle your fingers. Can you see them? Some of you who are over 25 probably can't, and that's okay because that is normal aging. You're 25 again, right? <laughs> All right. Now, pull them in just a little bit to about 145 degrees. Now, this is the, your normal peripheral vision for a 75-year-old without dementia. It's just that little bit smaller. All right. So, next, we're going to put on our scuba mask. If you have glasses, it might be a little easier to take them off. Scuba mask doesn't really reflect them that much, though. Put on your scuba mask and just look around and see the differences in what you can see. All right, now, between you and your partner, I want you to decide. One of you is going to be the person living with dementia, and the other one will be your caregiver. <laughs> All right, so person living with dementia, get your scuba goggles on, scuba mask, and you're at arm's length. All right, caregiver, I want you to get up right front close and just smile. And then take off your scuba mask, but I want you to realize how close they are to you. All right, now once you get a feel for that, I want you to switch. So each of you have a turn on each roll. wanted to do when they had the mask on and your caregiver was in your face? Back away. Back away. What was that? I heard somebody, I just didn't hear what you said. Push. Push, yeah, get them away from you, good. All right, and does anybody remember what Tifa called it when you're up in somebody's face and you're visually attacking them? Confrontational. Confrontational stance, excellent, good job. All right. I'm just going to throw this out here. A lot of you have attended our trainings before, and this might be a little bit repetitive for you. You've probably done this before. But it's very important to reiterate it and kind of embed it in your mind so you realize exactly what you're doing when you approach somebody. So if you approach somebody like this and they have dementia, what do you think they might do? How do you think they will react? Scared. Scared? 
Anybody else? Swing at you, very good. Um, what about if you're trying to provide cares? Let's say um, for direct care workers, let's say you're trying to help somebody to the restroom. It's excellent, yes. They're not gonna let you help them if they don't realize what you're doing. All right. Do you think it's more of an issue or less of an issue if you have dementia? More, more of an issue, more. Why? Because your mind's not functioning like ours does. Yes, your mind's not functioning. You, you're slower to make those connections and you don't realize that they are there to help you. All right. So what should you not do when you communicate with somebody who you suspect might have early stage dementia? Get in their face. Don't get in their face. Yes, don't get in their face. And what should we do, or at least try to do? Step off to the side. Step off to the side. Tell them what we're going to do. What was that? Tell them what Tell them what you're gonna do. Very good, yes. Give them a little bit of insight and try to help them realize that you're here, that you're there to help and not to hurt them. All right. You can take a seat. We'll go on to the next section. This is what you're gonna do. Here she is and I wanna to talk to her. Put your move on. I'm gonna to step to the side Keep my face facing her, but turn my shoulder outward. Drop the vision, and there's no big difference. Try it, because I want you to realize this term, supported stance. Confrontational, the only difference was my shoulder. When I cued her visually that you could get out, she relaxed, because I'm in support, not in confrontation. Try it. <laughs> this will be a short one. Um, so I want you to stand up again. She talked about the confrontational stance and then the supportive to the side. So something I just observed, well, we observe it a lot. When you're walking down the hallway and you come up behind a resident, how soon before they know that you're there? When you're past them. And again, that comes into that scuba vision. So with your partner, just do a little practicing. Be one, be a person with, one of you wants to be a person living with dementia. The other person, like you're working here, you're walking down the hall behind that person and just see how long it takes for the person living with dementia before they actually see you. So give that a try, someone with the binoculars and then someone walking behind them. Just see how long it takes. Okay, so persons that were living with dementia, did you see them when they were back here from you? No. How about right here? To the side? There? How about here? Maybe? Yeah. So they're, you're almost past them before they see you, right? Show of hands, how many of you have observed that at Oak Knoll? You should see every hand go up. So this is something that's really important to remember, dementia or not, in all levels of care, independent living, assisted living, nursing care, um, if you come barreling past, and we've all got work to do, we all need to get meals delivered, we all need to get apartments renovated, we all need to get mail sent out, but we need to remember that if you come barreling past somebody, the likelihood is they're gonna get scared and jump, or they might trip and fall. So we just wanna be mindful of that. Any suggestions on what you can do to help them or so that that doesn't happen? What do you do now? I rattle my keys. You rattle your keys? <laughs> Say something. Be Say hard. something, okay. What else can you do? Pause for a moment, slow down. Anything else? So that doesn't really go with confrontational supportive quite as much, but I think it's something that we really need to remember when you are using those binoculars, that they truly can't see you. 
Um, the other thing you might want to do is just pause for a moment and greet them and say hello, how are you doing, make some small talk, um, so they feel that they're being seen by us instead of just charging forward. You don't say, on your left, and keep on moving. <laughs> so just be mindful of that. Um, that also is a way to have your supportive stance as opposed to confrontational. Thanks. One other idea. Has anybody ever come up upon maybe a particular resident in the hall, and you're afraid to go around them, so you just kind of hang back? Yep. Yeah. That, that's OK, too. You know, if, if you know somebody might startle easier than somebody else and you're not sure how to get around them, it is okay just to kind of hang back or even taking a wider stance, you know, so that you can come up and they can catch you over here, you know, and just seeing them and saying hello that way. You know, the wider the stance, um, maybe the quicker they're going to be able to see you coming up on them. to your content because they're worried about your visual cue saying you're blocked in. They're already starting to rev up that limbic system because the limbic system says you better be ready. This is going to go badly. Okay? So we're going to turn to the side and do this. Here's the next change in vision. I want you to take your scuba vision. Disease gets worse. Now I'm in mid-stage. Take your hands out here. This was scuba. Bring it in so your hands line up with your shoulders approximately 12 to 18 inches across and create a circle. This is now my visual field. So between early to middle stage, I am down to approximately 12 to 18 inches of a visual circle. That's all I can process. I can't handle more data. I've got to limit the incoming and I keep the middle because that's my curiosity thing and I'm less aware of the world around. So put on the binoculars now. Now go back to the diving mask, drop down to the binoculars. Now the first thing I'm gonna have you do is turn to your tabletop. Turn to the table, and I want you to put something right in front of you and something out across the table. Like, imagine you're at a four top and you're gonna be able to see across the table. Okay, so what I want you to do is use your, your scuba vision, get your scuba vision on, and if you position yourself well, you can look down without moving your head, look down, you see the plate, look across, you see the person across. You can see the plate of the person if you just move your eyeballs within that field of vision. You don't have to move your head. You should be able to do it all at once. Close down to binoculars. Uh-oh. I can do one or the other, but I'm gonna have to switch in order to see the other thing. I can't look at both at the same time. So let me tell you what you've got. Look up and out, social vision. Look down, task vision. Social, task. I can either observe you or I can do something. And every time I switch, I have to turn off social, turn on task. Turn off task, turn on social. It's very tiring and it gets confusing to me, it takes more time for me to do this. And every time I do it, it gets harder and harder. And if I have problems with immediate recall working memory, if I get real engaged with you, I totally forget there is anything down there. So imagine that somebody's leg rest is sticking out in front of my feet and I see a really good friend I wanna go talk to. Oh! Down I go, okay? Imagine that my walker is sitting off to the side and I see a really good person I wanna go talk to. I will get up and you will yell out, Tifa, where's your walker? Uh -uh. Tifa, Tifa, sit down, sweetheart. You need to get your walker, do you? In your next statement, do you want to fall? Yes, that's why I got up. I was, I was hoping to take a tumble, that was my goal. I'm so glad you figured that out because that's exactly why I got up so I could fall. I was hoping, yes, I think I could do it this time. <laughs> Can I have you a couple of the yeah. sure, uh, page with more hair? Mm -hmm. Can I have everybody stand up again for me? So I want you to 
put on your scuba vision. Okay, make sure make sure your your head's not right behind somebody. Slide over a little bit. Slide over a little bit. So everybody's got their scuba vision on, correct? Can everybody see all three of us up here? Scuba, not binocular. Yeah, scuba. Okay, yeah. now I want you to turn to binocular, where they're both both hands are pinpointed right in front of us. Now what do you see? So yeah, some of you are saying one of anything, some of you are saying I can't see much of anything. So turn your head and just just I just want you to pay attention to how different that is. So kind of look around and how sort of excluding it is when you have those binoculars on and what you see. Okay, so put those binoculars back on. Look, look at me or look up here and then look down. Like you were writing on a paper. A lot of you are, some of you are college students, you're working on your papers. Keep that binocular vision on. And then go ahead and look back up. So I want you to look down one more time. How, what, what differences do you see or what, how does that make you feel? Discombobulating. Discombobulating. Mm -hmm. Very frustrating. Frustrating. Yeah. Disoriented. Disoriented. Yep. So with dementia, your brain is already drastically affected when you have to go from social vision, which is communication, one on one with people, down to task vision. It's overwhelming, or it can be overwhelming. Can you think about? our residents and what they do day in and day out, where do you think is one of the biggest places that this comes into effect? Dining room. Dining room, yeah. So if you think about, it could be at all three levels, but if you think about it, you're in the Hope Dining Room, and some, uh, some of our residents that have dementia that are further along with the stages, um, do you see them communicating a lot with some of their table mates? Or do you see them more focused on eating? It's either one or the other. Talk, yeah, it's either one or the other a lot of times. Yep. Um, how do you think we can support that? You have a time where you're greeting them and helping them set up, but then try not to interrupt when they're focused on eating. Yep. Yeah, if somebody who is really focused on eating, possibly not interrupting at that time, you know, greeting them before they start eating. Any other ideas? Maybe simplify their food. Simplifying their food. What's in front of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Often a lot of stuff in front of them. Yep. Yeah, that's very true. You know, if they've got three or four different things to choose from and they've got that binocular vision, um, it may be more difficult to decide or to see. Well, it could be really overwhelming for, for a little bit. You maybe just give them a little bit of time. You know? Yep. I've seen that a lot of times. Maybe just give them a sandwich or something to drink. It's just good. Yep. And think about if somebody goes from taking a bite, they're on their task vision, and they move their head up, and they start to communicate with their neighbor. They may need a cue or a reminder. You know, Paige, let's, let's you know, you've got your peas over here. Why don't you you know, keep eating or assisting them that way, you know, giving them those cues to remember, oh yeah, I've got to go down again and see that task vision. My task is to try and eat and to get that nourishment. You want to take them kind of in between those two social and task. And we have other people that are always on the go, so you have to give them like grab and go types. Sure, food. definitely. Uh, food. Yep. Yes, They're exactly. Off calories as fast as they can. <laughs> That's very true. I think we can all think of a few of those people, yeah. right? Yep. Thank you, Enda. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thanks. Good. One other thing I thought of, just in um, like interactions, even residents to residents, or um, 
um, if you're with someone who's doing paperwork or, or writing out a check or looking over notes or minutes from a meeting, they might be very focused on what they're doing. And if you start talking to them at the same time, they're gonna look up to you and have that conversation. And then they're gonna go back. They might have to start reading all over again or they might forget where they were or they might write the check incorrectly, or they might forget that they'd already ordered their main course, but they were looking maybe at dessert. So just a lot of different ways and different levels of living um, that that could happen. I'm just saying that if you thought about what came out of your mouth, you might reconsider and hold that just for a second. So put on your binoculars. Now, this is the visual field you have. Now, person get in front of the individual, smile at them, make sure you're at arm's length. You want to be right at arm's length and stick your hand out at them. Stick your hand out at them. Stick your hand out at them. How are you going with your quack with a hand already? All right, lots of up and down today. Go ahead and stand back up and get with your partner. And decide, once again, who's going to live with dementia and who's going to be the caregiver. And don't worry, we will switch so you won't get the chance to experience everything. And I would like you to reenact exactly what you just saw here. Caregiver, I want you to come over and just start poking up. And then make sure you take time to switch roles so the caregiver becomes the person with dementia and vice versa. All right, people living with dementia, what did you find yourself wanting to do when your caregiver came and started poking at you? Move out of the way. Hit him. Why do you think this is? You don't realize what's going on. I think I heard somebody say it's frightening. Can't see it coming. Can't see it coming. Excellent. All right. Have you ever had this happen when you try to help somebody, whether you are a direct care worker and you're trying to assist somebody with like personal care, or even in the dining room when you approach somebody to put food down and maybe they jump back? Has anybody ever experienced anything like that? I know more than like two people have had to experience that. All right, and what do we usually call this when it happens? Like, what are some terms that we use to describe this behavior? Combative. Paranoid. Paranoid. What about direct care workers um, when you're trying to assist somebody? What do we often, we run to our nurse and say, so and so. Anybody? Refusing. Refusing, yes, exactly. They're resistant to cares. And why do you think that they're resistant to cares? I'm sorry, what was that? They might not see you as coming to help. They don't see you as coming to help. They see you as coming to hurt them. Exactly. They don't see that you're coming to help them. They see that you're coming to hurt them. They're not making that connection that when I'm trying to reach out whether I'm going to change your shirt, they don't see that. They just see this person coming at me because that's all they can see. All right. So if somebody feels visually trapped or they think we're just being friendly and we're just talking, um, and then all of a sudden we reach out and touch them, what what do you, hmm. we already know that the common reaction is to step back or whatever. And so how do you think you can help this? Tell them what you're going to do. Tell them what you're going to do? Or what you'd like to do, or why you're there, and the purpose of your presence. Your, why you're there, and why you're doing what you're doing? Kind of Ask them about their mission to do it. 
Ask their permission. Excellent. Demonstrating with your hands. Maybe you can show on yourself or you can point to something or anything like that to kind of give, get that message across and connect those lines a little bit better. All right. So I would like you all to stand back up again. It's good leg exercise. All right. Now, rather than having your, um, sorry. Rather than the support or confrontational stance, put your binoculars on and caregiver, try approaching from a supportive stance. So you're right in front of them, you drop back, and then they can see more of you and they can see that exit. And then you can try to assist them. Make sure you switch and take turns playing each role. focused on one person. It doesn't take up your whole vision. Doesn't take up your whole field of vision, yes. Alright, did, did anybody feel that it really wasn't that much different, that it's kind of it's very very similar to confrontational stance? Yeah. Why do you think that is? The lack of vision in general. It's always gonna make it difficult to interpret what you're seeing. Lack of vision is always gonna make it difficult to interpret, which is very good. Um, were you still uncomfortable? Yeah. Do you have an uh, inclination of why? Yeah, you don't like people touching you. So, do you think maybe if they got permission to come close and touch you, things might be a little bit different? As we were saying before, you can explain or demonstrate what you're doing, and you get that permission to enter their personal space. Excellent. Because what do you realize now that I've told you what's going on here? They're thinking you're just going to be social and all of a sudden when you do anything, it came out of nowhere and their immediate flight, fight, fright. You're the one that started it because they did not see what you showed them because it was out of their range. So here's the rule. Yeah. Because I know she might be all the way to mid-stage, and I, she still might just now be getting her dementia diagnosis, although people have been wondering for a while, what we don't talk about is the change in vision. Nobody talks about that stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna quit moving when we're double arms length away. And the reason is that gives her a chance at double arms length away, she can see a fair amount of me. If I'm up here, I've eliminated a lot of my cueing. And it also is threatening her. So I'm gonna stop here, so I know she's in the center field here. Uh, she's got me. I'm gonna give her a high sign. Hand near your face. <coughs> Here's another heads up. Change your name tag so it's up on your right shoulder. The reason is, what I want her to do is see my hand, travel up to here, find my name tag, go to my face. I'm increasing odds that I'm going to give her the information that she wants when she goes to name my name. And I'll give her my name, but this is a heads up. There's no point in putting it over here. She's not going to notice it once we get going. Don't put it down here. Or you're going to draw her eyes to where you don't want her to be. And then the next thing she might do is reach out and try to touch and see what it feels like right there. So here we go, I move in, 
And the tricky part is getting used to it. Hey, now what did I do right here? I gave her a high sign that said, look, my hand. And then I offered her my hand. Her eye could track that because I'm far enough away for her to track it. I'll know whether or not she tracked it if she reaches out and offers me her hand. Hand under hand, sideways, and now we're ready for an interaction. It's called positive physical approach. It uses everything we've learned so far, puts it together, and allows us to be in the same place at the same time, and her distress level will be quite low. She's allowed to give me feedback. If she doesn't offer her hand, should I keep moving into her space? Because she just told me, stay out. So what I'm gonna do, rather than move forward, is turn my body sideways out here. Because I don't know what else has happened today. I don't know how threatened she feels. I can talk from here. <laughs> okay. Okay, one more final exercise. So, person living with dementia, Oh, come on, it's almost over. <laughs> A person living with dementia. So, and the caregiver is going to be two arm lengths away. Just practice on approaching that with the hand to the face and extending the hand. Now see if that helps. And make sure when you approach that you stay on the side. Turn the side and 
stayed there because she, from what I can see back here, she's still thinking about it. She's thinking about it. She's processing. So she wasn't readily accepting. She, so he stayed back. Perfect. Keep going with it. Or let's have June accept your invitation this time. Okay. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, June. It's Mason. Hi, Mason. How are you? Well, I'm pretty good. <laughs> How's your day been so far? It's fine. Thank you. Are you going in for some food? I believe I will. Okay. Let's go find you a seat. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. High five. That was great. Nice job. Good job. Thank you both. Do you guys have any questions or have there been people that you've observed, residents that you've observed that this would be helpful with? It works really well with Helen. Yeah. It works really well with Helen. Very well. Yep. And Dory. Even, even they vary from day to day. Yes. So one yep, day yep. they may be fine with regular or a, a, a more regular to us interaction, and another day they may be more sensitive. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I mean, even day to day or hour to hour. It could be person to person. Rita may come up and try <coughs> the very same thing that I just did, and it didn't work. But she's a new face. It's a new approach. It's the next five minutes, and it may work wonderfully. So yeah, don't ever get defeated. Don't ever think, gosh, I've tried this 10 million times, and it hasn't worked. Because that 10 millionth and oneth time, it's going to work, and it's going to work great. And it's going to provide that support to that resident that they need. Any questions? Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for coming.